Hello, everybody, again. Uh, this is Kathy Wood. Uh, I wanted to update you. Uh, the markets are settling down, which is great. And I hope everyone is settling down as um, the coronavirus, uh, as we're bending the curve here in the United States uh, with the coronavirus. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to address uh, five topics. Uh, the first is liquidity in the Fed. The second is fiscal policy, at least at the margin. Uh, the third is the market. The fourth, the economy. And the fifth, uh, just a little bit more about how innovation is gaining traction here and actually is getting more political cover. So uh, to start off with, uh, with uh, the Fed monetary policy liquidity, at the beginning of this week, and actually through uh, a lot of the week, we saw uh, the spreads uh, in various markets. And what I mean by that in the, in the uh, bond market, uh, the spreads uh, between junk bonds and uh, treasuries uh, and between other bonds and treasuries, uh, they seem to be flattening out. We really want them to go down. That would suggest that the bond market uh, believes that the, the risks are diminishing. Uh, well, they started to flatten out at pretty high levels, uh, but we're, we're kind of stuck. And so uh, today we saw the Fed addressing that. Um, uh, specifically uh, in the junk bond market is going to be buying junk bond ETFs. And in the muni market, the municipal bond market, which was under duress, again, the issue here for bond investors is we are going to go through a very difficult time when it comes to the economy. The numbers already look terrible. And I think bond investors are trying to figure out who is going to go bankrupt, who's, who is not, or who's uh, going to need some forgiveness. And so we did see a stabilization, but we needed the turn. And uh, today, I believe we're getting that turn, which is very important. Um, so uh, the other thing uh, we got today was uh, initial employment uh, claims, unemployment claims. Uh, so at 6.6 .6 million, they were roughly a little bit above last week, uh, but not as bad as many people thought they would be. Uh, so it's not good news that they are that high, uh, but uh, the worst we're not seeing the worst case here. And so the Fed announcing these measures today, they, they announced them at roughly the same time that number came out. So there is a, a high degree of sensitivity to what's going on in the economy. We have the administration and the Fed united. They are not fighting with each other anymore. And in fact, if you go back to 08, 09, we saw a lot of uh, infighting uh, during the, the financial crisis between fiscal policymakers, monetary policy, and, and even among each other and uh, uh, in both groups. Uh, we're not seeing that now, and that's a good thing. I think the market um, has taken some comfort from that. On the fiscal policy side, the only thing I'll mention is uh, that President Trump today, during uh, today this week during the uh, task force meetings, has been um, focused on one thing that we think is very important, and I've mentioned this in a, a few of our past uh, videos. Uh, this idea of a payroll tax holiday for the rest of the year for both employers and employees. Uh, President Trump and his administration are thinking about how to get this economy working again, how to prevent that depression. And I do think they are preventing a depression, but how to get us on our feet again. Uh, well, the, the best news is the, the loans that are going out there to help uh, companies sustain themselves, you know, so, so they don't have to cover rent, utilities and employee costs right away during this very difficult month or two. Uh, so, so that's good. But then a payroll tax holiday would be a terrific incentive for employers to pull as much activity into this year as possible. Uh, and uh, employees would like that too. They'd be happy to work overtime uh, if we're facing this payroll uh, tax holiday. This is uh, one of Art Laffer's um, ideas. 
And he believes, while he's not been happy with uh, the way the administration originally um, attacked the problem, meaning the tendency to throw money at it, he believes that this payroll tax holiday would do a lot to ameliorate uh, the deleterious effects, deleterious effects of uh, those initial responses. Uh, On to the market, it's been really interesting from a psychological point of view uh, to, to watch uh, market participants. Uh, the, going, the, the going assumption, and, and I've been using this phrase too, is that we are in a bottoming process. Well, normally in a bottoming process, um, the markets don't go straight up. Uh, and we are reaching uh, what many technicians would call resistance levels. I think in the 2,900, 3,000 level for the S&P 500, and we're in the mid 2700s right now. Uh, So maybe they'll be right. Um, But I'm seeing a lot of discomfort out there on the part of investors. Uh, You know, there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. And um, I think a lot of investors are waiting for another chance to get in. And maybe they will get it. Uh, I don't know. But I I do know as time has gone on, and I've, I've seen uh, commentators on CNBC and Bloomberg talk about the testing process and how we'll go in and uh, retest the old lows. Again, we might, I don't know, but so many people are talking about it uh, that I believe the probability of it happening has gone down. Uh, Now, there are a lot of fears in the marketplace that investors will continue uh, uh, to to, uh, ponder. Uh, The first one is the COVID uh, virus. And, uh, you know, have we truly bent the curve? Or are we going to see flare-ups in California uh, and elsewhere? Um, again, we don't know the answer to that, but uh, obviously the news in New York is promising. Uh, I know today the number of deaths went out to a new high and the number of cases also went up. So we're not completely out of harm's way, even though uh, I believe the CDC is uh, believes uh, that models suggesting that the total number of deaths will be roughly 60,000. I believe uh, that the CDC is blessing that. Again, if we have these flare-ups, those numbers will go up. Maybe the markets will respond to those. Um, the, second, uh, the second variable that investors will be uh, uh, pondering are, okay, what is going to be the reaction when some of the economic statistics that we know are going to be bad, uh, what will be the reaction when they come out, when we are facing them and when companies are responding to them. And uh, I I would say we have a a good understanding of what's going to happen. And I would say a lot is priced into the market, especially now that the president, uh, the administration, the tax task force are beginning to focus on the other side of this. Uh, So uh, this is not a downward spiral which is um, unstoppable. Uh, I think we do believe that now and that we will uh, get to the other side of this much faster than those who thought we'd be shut down for almost the rest of the year thought er early on. Um, There there is a concern uh, that the virus will reappear in in the fall. So that will be another reason, perhaps people, uh, keeping people out of the market. Uh, I've said many times in the past, uh, f- from the time the, ex- the, uh, the market started moving up after the, the global financial crisis, that a wall of worry is a very good thing uh, in terms of cre- creating strong bull markets, durable bull markets. And I think that's uh, what is happening here once again, fears of the virus, fears of economic activity, the response to the numbers, the earnings, company guidance, uh, uh, fears of the virus coming back in the fall. And then, of course, we have an election year, and there are going to be all kinds of um, controversies stirred up during uh, an election year campaign season. So I think those who are uh, waiting for another 
crack at, at, at the market at, at near the, the lows we saw recently. They have reasons to think that might happen, but there are so many people thinking that, that again, I would, uh, I would say that the odds have gone down that we'll see uh, a retest of the low or uh, a breakdown below it, even a false breakdown. Uh, I think the other thing that's going to be happening during this period, which will be a support for st stocks, certainly relative to bonds, is the rebalancing away from bonds to stocks. Uh, uh, there are a number of reasons this is going to happen. Uh, bonds had done so well relative to stocks is one of those. Uh, and then another one is um, asset allocators thinking about how much firepower there is out there and how much in a, in to stir up economic activity and how big the deficits are going to be, the deficit funding needs. Uh, so these will be headwinds for the, the bond market and uh, they will be tailwinds uh, pretty much for the, for the stock market, especially if uh, fiscal and monetary policymakers are uh, successful in moving us, bridging us from here to what I believe will be a, a V-shaped recovery. Uh, so uh, this V-shaped recovery, why do I think that? Well, if you look at the last two shocks that we um, experienced, uh, and I mean real shocks, the likes of which we're experiencing now, um, I liken this period to 9-11, uh, that was a shock. And, and uh, as well to uh, 1987, when in October of 1987, uh, portfolio insurance failed and uh, investors went running for the hills. Uh, that was a shock. It took the market down uh, nearly 25% in one day. And if you and I believe this period is the combination of those two periods, uh, so worse than both. Both, uh, but if we look back to those periods, what happened? Well, forces in motion before the shock remained in motion after. Pretty much got back to normal. Uh, so in '87, we were in a very strong bull market, and the economy was very strong. And that's exactly what happened. We went back to that. It took a, a few months uh, for, for investors and consumers and businesses to feel that uh, the coast was clear, but we did get back to on trend, the, the trend we were, we were enjoying before. Uh, in uh, 2001, uh, we were in the middle of the tech and telecom bust and we had 9-11 shock and uh, took a few months to uh, figure out, you know, if this, uh, if this meant war or whatever, and, um, or more terrorist attacks. And uh, then again, a few months and uh, the tech and telecom bust resumed. Uh, so the markets didn't really get a reprieve uh, there, uh, but uh, the economy continued to, um, to correct for the excesses of the tech and telecom bubble. Uh, this time around, we were on a very strong trajectory. And as I have uh, mentioned many times, the consumer in particular was very strong, uh, not only here in the US, but in China, while businesses were very cautious because of the China-US trade conflict and uh, because inverted yield curves uh, were uh, very well known historically for causing recessions. And we did uh, go through a period of inverted yield curves last year. Uh, so businesses were not stretched in terms of inventories before this. Now I'm sure the inventories uh, are going to build up a bit here, uh, but, but we were not in a period of real excess before this started. So I think this shock will result in the trend before the trend that was in place before its start uh, returning, and uh, and with a little catch up, uh, and that's why we use the the phrase V shaped just to really uh, suggest that you know a lot of people think it's going to sputter around. Uh, I really don't think that's going to be the case. 
So uh, the last topic here, I can't leave uh, a video or any conversation without talking about innovation, which is all ARK Invest does in terms of research and investing. Uh, and uh, the one comment I'll make uh, is that in, in healthcare particular, I think we're going to see dramatic changes. Um, uh, they were already underway, but as with every crisis, um, uh, innovation gains traction during a, a crisis. And in this case, I think uh, innovation in healthcare especially, uh, is going to gain political cover. I think it already has political cover. We know how, um, how uh, ill-prepared we were from a testing point of view uh, and from a vaccine point of view. And I think that uh, areas that are going to facilitate those are, are going to see funds flowing and reimbursements increasing or at least being approved at, at a faster rate than normal. Uh, we know that uh, Abbott and Cepheid, which is owned by Danaher, have been receiving accolades for their PCR tests um, uh, to, help to help establish whether, whether people had uh, COVID-19 or not. And, um, and uh, kudos to them, they did rev up quickly. Uh, but those tests are based on old technology, PCR technology. And uh, there are so many more new tests around that are so much better, uh, that are not as crude in their, um, in their application. And uh, the reason they are evolving is because of DNA sequencing and synthetic biology. So DNA sequencing, think Illumina, uh, would be the equivalent of reading DNA, reading the DNA. DNA, uh, well, um, uh, synthetic biology is the equivalent of writing the DNA, the instruction set for tests. And so we are, and, and the company really associated with that in a big way is Twist. Uh, and uh, I have marveled that Twist, which had a low, has a low cash cushion and is in a free cash burn situation, held up so well during this crisis. Um, I believe this is the reason that, um, that the need for its technology is accelerated and the political cover to get the budgets to move it along faster uh, is now here, especially in an election year. Uh, so uh, as far as vaccines, I think um, uh, the, three, the three companies uh, that, that we're seeing do uh, move along the, most quickly are Moderna, uh, Arcturus, and Inovio. And uh, we own two of, th the, of the three of those. One is just too expensive. Uh, but I think um, what's happened here, both with tests and vaccines, um, both of those categories historically have evolved into commoditized spaces, or if not commoditized, in the case of vaccines, and especially after the SARS epidemic in 2003, SARS just went poof, it disappeared. And so the funding for, uh, a vaccine, for vaccines around it and other coronaviruses also went poof. Uh, I think um, I think uh, the psychology has changed dramatically here, uh, and um, on the testing front, uh, there's uh, this notion that the lab tests, uh, la the lab testing space, is a commoditized space. That has been true, but that's the old way of thinking about testing. I know that those of us who have been watching Quest and La and LabCorp for years have uh, harbored hopes at various times that some of the esoteric tests that they were evolving would result in higher margin, higher prices, higher margins, uh, and more investment. Uh, well, well, that never happened. Those es esoteric tests became commoditized pretty quickly. The testing today is not like the testing of uh, yesterday. We're talking now about uh, molecular diagnostic tests 
that are going to be able to uh, decipher, thanks to uh, DNA sequencing, decipher exactly what mutations are taking place in each of our bodies. And uh, there are therapies being developed to, uh, to attack those mutations, of one of which uh, is CRISPR, as a CRISPR gene editing. So um, I do believe that the holy grail of precision medicine uh, where testing will be a critical variable and where genomic specialists, which again, you've got in Vitae very focused on this space, genomic specialists uh, are going to, uh, or geneticists are going to uh, look at our uh, DNA annually or, or whatever to decipher uh, how our, our genomes are evolving. I do believe that the testing companies are going to occupy a very special role, and um, and it could be a winner take most a, a role. So when we talk about Invite or Grail, we're thinking or Grail and and Gardened Health, we're thinking about could this be a winner take most market? And the reason is um, data collection is critical here and uh, expertise in uh, artificial intelligence and DNA sequencing, and, and let's throw in there CRISPR gene editing. Uh, those three uh, uh, technologies coming together um, are going to give companies competitive advantages in terms of getting to the right answers the fastest and developing the right tests at the right time. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much for uh, joining us again today. Um, I'm glad the markets have given us a reprieve. I think the outlook is hopeful, much more hopeful than two weeks ago. And, um, and I wish you all uh, a very happy weekend, Easter, Passover, and uh, wonderful times with your families. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.